Our plane ride back caused a panic attack. I'm Jackie from Omaha, Nebraska. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Microphones. We're using the snowball today to speak into and to speak with you. We will not be throwing it. We will only be speaking into it. We are back in the saddle again. We're back in the saddle again. I've got this lockjaw uh -oh. kind of thing on one side. I feel like that only this side of my mouth can open. Well, you want me to, I can I can slap you on the right side or the left side and yeah. straighten it out. If if at some point I just start talking like this, just grab my lower jaw and just start working it as if Ugh, it, as I don't if it do that. needed to be lubed or something, put some WD-40 on it or something. I'm not gonna uh, kill you. Uh, we're back in Cloud Cal 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 California, and you know, it's this, this is the saddle. It's an Aerosmith song. Well, it's really just kind of a, I'm in a folding chair. I don't see, you. you're not in a saddle, so you are also in a folding chair. I am, right? Quit lying to the people. Thanks for watching our commencement address on our main channel. If you haven't watched it, it's never too late to go back and watch that. It's 18 minutes, but it flies by. Uh, thanks to all of you who supported our time in North Carolina yes. and enjoyed GMM from the road. But now, as I said, we are back. We had to take a plane back. We so did. I would like on this episode to talk about that plane ride and some things that I think I'm learning about myself and I'm curious to know about you. Oh, you're curious about me again, huh? After all these years, <laughs> you're curious about me again. It's, it's the newness of being in a familiar place creates curiosity amongst friends. Put that on a t-shirt. It's, well, kind of wordy. Yeah, it probably would be a horrible t-shirt. So, so we had the direct flight back. Of course, I have my family in tow, my wife, Christy, and my, and my kids. Uh, yeah, I left my wedding band. Here's another, another point yeah. of housekeeping. I left my wedding band back at home when we went to North Carolina. Link always Shoot leaves me. his wedding band behind when he travels. It's just kind of... It's well, kind of his thing. No, and I was playing... <laughs> it's horrible. It's not true. I'm I, joking. I was playing a three-year-old in a sketch that we were shooting that you'll see later. Two-year-old. Well, he, he turns three. Oh, he does turn three. So halfway through the sketch. Anyway, I had to take my wedding band off because the three-year-olds don't wear those. Two-year-olds are. I, I hid it amongst Lincoln's Legos, and then I forgot it was there until yeah. I had already gotten on the plane. Yeah. Anyway. Your excuse. It's I'm okay. talking about the plane ride back now. We take a plane ride back. My wife, you know, she understands, and I do have the band back on. Yep. I have my kids with me, and you have your wife and, and your kids, kids yes. with you. So you there's, know, there's nine of us together that travel by air and if you didn't notice there's not a row in a plane that has nine seats mm -hmm. usually i mean not in any planes i've been on no so finding a way for us to sit together when all our, our seats were all over the place we caused a bit of a scene yeah we'll save that for later but i i was separated from my family the bottom line is i ended up sitting next to an old dude who was kind of you sleeping. abandoned your family, dude. No, because my kids wanted to be next to mama. You know, they got to be next to mama so they can go to sleep and they feel comforted. Mama. So they put daddy up next to this old dude who was just sleeping with his mouth open the whole time. But his head wasn't making contact with he, the seat. He had the hover head? He had a hover head. It was just like this. And I felt like it I It didn't should, wobble? I felt like I should just push him back a little bit just so he would rest because it was making me nervous. Because you He's, can't sleep on a plane. Yeah. Now, I was sleeping on the plane. Lillian Lincoln and Locke, your son, were in the seat behind me. They were sleeping. Locke was there? Locke moved oh. back to where they They were sleeping. And then Lando, is, Lando, my two-year-old, is sleeping between me and Christy. So I'm against the thing. And we're, you know, I'm sleeping. I've, it's probably been at least an hour since yeah. Lando's going to sleep. Five-hour so flight. And then all of a sudden, somebody grabs my hand. And I'm like. It could be one of two people, I'm thinking. I was, I was like, I'll take a Coke. <laughs> and then, uh, no, I realized, you know, I kind of grogged out of the sleepiness. And I realized it's Christy leaning over Lando towards me. She says, I need you to talk to me. I'm like, what? Was she having a relationship moment? No. No. She said. I want to connect with you right now. She said, I'm having a panic attack. Whoa. And then I started to realize as I was like coming to out of my sleepiness that there, we were experiencing quite a bit of turbulence. Now, were you hover heading or were you? Were <laughs> no, you... I was. I was. I was uh, angle headed. Okay, good. I was against the. Uh, that thing. doesn't make me. Nervous. I didn't notice there was that much turbulence going on there. We were like, oh, now I remember this because everywhere. I can't. You all know this if you watch Good Mythical Morning. I can't sleep on a plane. I'm like seven feet. Well, I'm six foot seven, but you might as well be seven feet tall. I can't sleep, and there was some intense turbulence 
especially in one section, I was like, you know, you kind of had to like, I kind of had to like grab onto something. But I wasn't awake enough when she said, I need you to talk to me to process what was going on. So my first inclination was to laugh. I was like, it, this must be some sort of a joke. I need you to talk to me. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then I look in her eyes and it's Wrong. this deep-seated fear now uh, also joined with a little bit of anger towards her husband. Ooh. Like, you're not feeling for me in this moment. So I, I grab her hand and I say, just put on some headphones and watch that television. And then I went back to sleep. Or like my eyes closed a little bit. I wasn't awake all the way. Uh -oh. but, then, but then it shook again and I look over and I realize that she actually was not joking. She was having a panic attack. So I, I reach and I get the barf bag. I don't know what to do. Well, you could have just comforted her. Well, I, I said, breathe. I said, breathe through your nose. And my, my old baseball coach, Ken Crow, he used to say this whenever right. I get winded. Yeah. Because I couldn't run a lot. He would say, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. You know where he got that? Because he was a karate coach. He was uh, my karate coach. He was my baseball coach. Yeah, so he knew about the inner So I told Chrissy, breather. breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. And I think that did help a little bit. And I was talking to her while I was telling her these things. So he actually, he actually just called it karate. I just and, and then it, it kind of smoothed out, and I went back to sleep, and everybody was happy. Everybody's alive. I got my wedding ring back. Uh, marriage is more than intact. There's no hard feelings. Don't worry about me. But it occurred to me that my reaction in those situations to turbulence is the polar opposite of Christie's. Yeah. You know, when she loses control of it a situation you. like that. It actually comforts you. Well, no, it doesn't cover me. But I'm just like... I have no control over this. I might as well just go to sleep and die in my sleep, I guess is what I was thinking. I, so when you were experiencing the turbulence, did you experience fear? Mm, fear? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, my fear dial, boop, 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 you know, it, bl it, blipped. it blipped a little bit. I mean, I don't, th I think only if you were, you know, dense or a monkey or something, would you not have a little bit of fear in that situation. If you don't have any control over it, you might as well not fear it. You just accept it. Well, you, you got to get there first. I mean, the first thing, I'm sitting there, I'm reading, I'm doing one of the seven things that I did repeatedly to, <laughs> to make it through the flight, playing games and reading books. And I think I was reading a book at the time. And it was, you know, and I'm like, okay, hold on. I'll be honest with you. The first thing that always goes through my mind when there's intense turbulence is, is the plane going to rip in half like on Lost? Because you know that's what happened on Lost. That's the opening episode. I mean, the thing just mm. snaps in half like a pretzel. And it was the pilot episode, so that's also cool. Get it, pilot? Yeah, that's. I wasn't thinking that. So it kind of went through my mind, like how much torque would we have to experience to, for this thing to snap in half? And then w would I be separate? I actually thought about this. Mm. Would I be separated from my family? Would I be on the rows, others? They were eight rows back. Like, would my family end up being like the others, and then I would be like a base camp? You thought about this? Yes. And here's my question. Because I think and about, that would suck if my kids and my wife were the others yeah. and I was at base camp. It would, Rhett, but it would make a great television show. Yeah. I don't think about any of that. I'm just like, I'm just going to go back to sleep. I mean, there's nothing in the placard that tells you what to do when the plane rips apart anyway. I've looked at it. When Lando, before he went to sleep, before we took off, I pulled out the placard and I said, oh, count the planes, find the kids. And then I realized it was kind of morbid. That he's like pointing out kids with like oxygen masks on. And yeah, he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> Find the kid that's panicking in, in a near death situation. Isn't this entertaining? That's all a placard is for me. It's not something to help me prepare. And even if it was, it wouldn't prepare you for that lost situation. So for me, I would like to think that I am Jason Bourne, that I would be prepared. But I'm coming to grips with the fact that when my wife looks me in the eyes and I'm ill equipped to help her, that I am Jason unborn. I am I am ill prepared to the point where I just oh just I'm just gonna go to sleep. It's like a zombie character, it sounds like. I maybe I need counseling. Jason unborn. Do you study the placards and know about the evacuation routes? Let me know in the comments. Do you know? Do you have a Jason Bourne type contingency plan? And I mean for real, don't don't give me that. I'm red and I know everything. Really, do you know? Well, I thought about this because people when in in emergency situations, people look to the tall people. Studies show this. Cuz well, they, they can see your They hair. find the tallest person because they think that the tallest person is going to be able to do something. It's like is there a there, no, I'm not, one, is there a tall person in the house? Yeah, I am not capable of many things. I can think about a lot of things. I don't do a lot of things well. But 
I'm very tall. And so I know that people will expect me to do great things in, in emergency situations. So when you were thinking through the plane ripping apart, did you come up with a contingency plan? A Jason Bourne moment? No, but I did, th I did think beyond the plane ripping apart and if we had to do like a water landing or we had to do an emergency landing and then an exit, I was really close to the exit row. My kids were in the back and I thought, should I let Hoverhead out? <laughs> See, I was thinking, I did think about this. I got to get into the aisle so Hoverhead can get out and go out. And then I got to get back in the aisle and wait for my kids to come because I can't just go out and leave my kids in the back of the plane. But Hoverhead really screwed the whole thing up because I've got to get into the aisle to get, let, you know, I thought about that a little bit. But you didn't, you didn't think about it enough to reach a conclusion. Because what are the chances that we're going to wreck? Well, that makes me feel better. You know, I, right. The chances are so low, but somebody should be thinking about it. The I pilot. Appoint, I appoint you to think about and it. And the flight attendants. You're taller than me, so yeah, yeah. You, you think about these things. Listen, if we get into a bad situation, just look to me. I'm tall. I'll figure something out. But if your wife or your loved one says she's having a panic attack, just hand her a barf bag. She didn't use it, but I gave it to her. You know, the ironic thing. The breathing thing. exercise has really helped. As we end this episode, the ironic thing is, I'm too tall to be in the military. Mm -hmm. Why would people look, I can't even be in the military. Really? 6'4". You can't be a, really? 6'4". I mean, you can't be a pilot, but can you not be in the military? That's true. You can't I, be over 6'4"? I can't be in the Marines. He can. Jason I can't be in the Marines. I can't be on a, I can't be on a sub. You <laughs> Too tall for a sub. Yeah, that's true. See, I can't okay. be on a submarine, and so you, what good am I? And you can't be a fighter pilot. All right, yeah. we're going to... Two news reporters in a hurricane. Right, here we go. Thanks for adding this and suggesting it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever the heck you suggest it. It's blowing this way. Oh! Hello, this is Link Lamont and reporting from the eye of the... Oh, we, yeah, we're in the eye. It's uh, totally calm of the may, hurricane. You may be wondering... You have to talk loud when you're hurrying. We're in the eye now, though. It's, <laughs> oh, uh, you may be wondering why my hair is not moving at all, and that's because I use... Gorilla Snot Club <laughs> Gel. Oh, now it's going the other way. Oh! Does there really need to be two of us? Oh, in fact, okay, there he goes. All right, I've been I've been looking for this gig for a while. <laughs>